During Aaron Judge's pursuit of the all-time American League home run record in 2022, there was a lot of talk about how special the Yankee Slugger's assault on the modern record book was. It seemed to feel to most watching that Judge was in uncharted waters for a modern day hitter, especially in the post-steroid era, but he wasn't really. There was another slugger who had belted 59 home runs just five years earlier, and that slugger could even be found sitting right next to Judge on the Yankees bench. I'm talking, of course, about Giancarlo Stanton, who hit 59 home runs for the Marlins back in 2017. In the StatCast era, perhaps no hitter has consistently hit the ball as hard as Giancarlo. His phenomenal bat speed and mammoth blasts have delighted fans for more than a decade, as he racked up nearly 400 career home runs along the way. Still, it's hard not to think of Stanton as someone who's underperformed consistently, especially compared to his outsized potential, and especially when it comes to the injury bug. When Stanton has four seasons with the Yankees, Stanton has missed a total of 256 games, almost as many as he's actually played in. And so far in 2023, the toll it's taken on his production seems to be at an all-time high. His OPS is barely above 700, and his batting average is under 200. On top of all this, he's now one of the slowest runners in baseball. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. The then Florida Marlins drafted Stanton out of Notre Dame High School in Sherman Oaks, California back in 2007, when he was just 17. Teased by junior high classmates about his unusual first name, he had decided to go by one of his middle names, Mike. And Mike Stanton was one hell of a ball player. His combination of size, strength, athleticism, and bat-to-ball skills marked him as the number three prospect in baseball in 2010, according to Baseball America. At 6'6", 245 pounds, Stanton looked like the baseball version of Rob Gronkowski on the diamond. That year, at just age 20, Stanton made his major league debut with the Marlins and blasted 22 home runs in his first partial season. He hit 34 the following year in his first full big league campaign. Despite a high K rate, his 141 OPS Plus proved how good of a hitter he truly was. And at barely the legal drinking age, this potential tantalized home run lovers everywhere. Then, in 2012, the Florida Marlins became the Miami Marlins. Mike Stanton became Giancarlo, and Giancarlo made his first All-Star team while leading the majors with a 608 slugging percentage and crushing 37 dingers with a 969 OPS. Unfortunately, he also missed close to 40 games due to injuries. He missed even more than that in 2013, having his toughest campaign to date, seeing his OPS Plus drop by over 20 points while batting under 250 for the first time in his career. However, he still managed to hit 24 home runs. Stanton's coming out party was really 2014. Playing in a nearly full season of 145 games, he slapped 288, 395, 555, and led the NL in home runs, total bases, slugging percentage, and intentional walks. He finished second in the MVP voting to Clayton Kershaw. At age 24, Stanton had started to establish himself as one of the game's premier power hitters, someone who could hit the ball harder and longer than pretty much all of his peers, someone that the entire ballpark, including opposing pitchers, held their breath for when he took his large strides up the plate. And I do mean large. At 6'6", Stanton was, at that point, the largest human to ever step foot in a major league outfield consistently. This record has since been broken by Aaron Judge. It was a tantalizing glimpse of what a healthy Giancarlo could do. It was just the healthy part that would soon become an issue. In 2015, he would play in just 79 games, but still managed to hit 27 home runs and make the All-Star team. He hit 27 more in 2016 in another injury-plagued season that saw him register his lowest OPS Plus since his rookie year at 120. The slugger's potential remained immense, but after what was now seven years of inconsistent performance constantly put on hold by injury, fans started to lose a bit of their luster for the big guy. But in 2017, he would do something he had done just once so far in his big league career. He would play in over 150 games, and while doing so, would put together one of the most impressive offensive seasons in recent history. During this magical year, he seemed to set personal highs in basically every offensive category. Extra base hits? Yep. Home runs? Yep. Slugging, OPS, and OPS Plus? All yes. Back to those home runs. He hit a lot, one after another at a blistering pace. And these were no wall scrapers. According to Baseball Savant, nearly 70% of Stanton's bombs were no doubters, a figure similar to Aaron Judge's in 2022. And it was a good thing he was hitting him that far. ESPN had just ranked Marlins Park as one of the six most difficult stadiums in which he hit a home run earlier that year. When he homered on August 27th, Giancarlo became the first player since Chris Davis in 2013 to hit 50 dingers in a season. He also became just the sixth player in MLB history to reach 50 home runs before the end of August. 
Then, on August 29th versus the Nationals, Stanton blasted his 18th home run that month, tying a 1937 record for the most in that month ever. Giancarlo would end up flirting with 60, finishing the season with 59 home runs and a league leading 132 RBI, blowing away Preston Wilson's franchise record of 121. He also hit a ball with the highest exit velocity in the major leagues that entire season, 120.1 miles per hour. Only future teammate Aaron Judge, then in his rookie season, could compete with Stanton's raw power. Finishing with a B war of 7.9, it wasn't really all that surprising that Stanton won both the Hank Aaron Award and the National League MVP, beating out Cincinnati Reds first baseman Joey Votto by two points. But he was still stuck in Miami, and although he now held virtually every Marlins career offensive record, Stanton, who was still in the middle of a 13-year, $350 million contract, was ready for a change. And so, in December, the Marlins shipped their big slugger to the New York Yankees for Starlin Castro and two minor leaguers. Stanton was just the second player in Major League history to be traded after a 50-homer season. Early on, Giancarlo, now donning pinstripes, delivered the goods. He hit two home runs in his debut with the Yankees, including in his very first at-bat on opening day. On May 15th, Stanton collected his 1,000th career hit, and in August, his 300th career home run. His offensive totals were down from his 2017 highs, but Stanton still managed to hit 38 home runs and drive in 100 for the Yankees in 2018, and perhaps most importantly, played in 158 games. New York fans were excited about the future, it seemed like Stanton had finally turned the corner on his inconsistent injury history, and with the majority of his at-bats now coming as a DH, it seemed hard to believe he would be anywhere near as prone to nicks and strains, especially with his iconic Adonis-like physique. Oh, how wrong this would turn out to be. Stan has been injured just about everywhere in his career, but around this time in particular, he was dealing with a rash of lower leg injuries, ankle tendonitis, a calf strain, a bruised foot. This not only sapped his once decent speed, but made it a virtual certainty he wouldn't be seeing any time in the outfield again, save for the occasional spot start. And what's more, when he was out there, there was no chance he was going to be performing above average. In 2021, Stan had somewhat of a bounce back season, slashing 273, 354, 516 with 35 home runs and 97 RBIs. Was it any anywhere close to his prime, but it was serviceable. A 136 OPS plus will always play, though it is important to note that as mostly a DH only contributor, his overall war of 2.0 wasn't really worth as much as you'd think, especially for a guy making around $30 million a year. He did also show out in the wildcard game that season, going 3 for 4 with a home run and two long singles in the Yankees 6-2 loss to the Red Sox. Then in 2022, as his teammate Aaron Judge was thrilling Yankees supporters and baseball fans alike, Stanton found himself yet again struggling, only this time it wasn't just with injuries. That played a factor as he managed to take the field in just 110 games, but his production at the plate, something that had always remained consistently high, floundered. His batting average dropped off a cliff to 211, his strikeout rate shot up to 30.3%, and he managed to slug just 462 with a 759 OPS. His 114 OPS plus was the worst mark of his career. This season, it's somehow only gotten worse, as he's managed to check off every single box for the declining player bingo card. Injured again? Yep, somehow negative defensive war despite playing in very few outfield games? You got it. Offensive numbers even worse than last year? Certainly. His 93 OPS plus is now literally below average, and he's hitting under the Mendoza line as well. Stanton's aging body and enormous 6'6 frame seem to have been breaking down for years now, and when you're that big, you need a stable frame to control your swing. This has led to a cratering of production that even the most cynical Yankees haters couldn't have predicted, even if they are currently reveling in it. But perhaps there is at least one bright spot for Yankees fans to cling to. Giancarlo still hits the ball really hard. Last season, over half of Stanton's batted balls went over 95 miles per hour. He ranked in the 99th percentile in average exit velocity and in the 100th percentile in max exit velocity. Only O'Neill Cruz hit a ball harder than he did last year, including Aaron Judge. And many of his fly balls were still home runs. His 30.4 home run to fly ball rate was one of the best marks of his career. And even as his exit velo has dropped this season, it's still sitting at a healthy 93.4. His strikeout rate has dropped as well, all the way to under 24%. If he keeps hitting the ball hard, consistently, one has to assume his fortunes will change for the better at least somewhat soon. In short, he can still be a major force at the plate, even if not one on par with Aaron Judge. And I, for one, am rooting for him. I like the league better with the mashing stand in it, even if it does have to happen for a team like the Yankees. Now, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and click this playlist for other essay content just like this. Have a great day.